Good morning. Kate and I have the day off, so we're heading inland a little way uh, to an area I know fairly well, where I was roughly brought up that area. And we're gonna have a wander around Brightling Park and we're gonna check out a load of follies around the area built by a famous landowner, uh, John Fuller, although he was referred to as Mad Jack because of some of the things he built. But yeah, Mad Jack and his follies. That's what we're walking today. And the plan is stop for some lunch. I hope you enjoy it. Now this one, is the Rotunda Temple. I'll go back a little bit, get it all in shot. That's it. Didn't really serve any purpose. It was just something pretty to have in the garden, as they did back in them days. They liked their posh landscaping and make things look flash. We're actually on private land here, so I'll have to do this quick and then we better bugger off. I'll just give you a quick walk around the outside. It's been nice in there when them windows open. Never been in it. It's always been closed up when I've been here. Shame really. Also I'll give you a quick pan round of the landscape. No, in fact I'll get up on the temple in a second and do that. Why oh, there's no one looking? Let's get round to the steps. There's the mouse doing her research. Ooh, long legs. Just on the off chance. No, no chance. This is the sort of landscape you get from up here. Old Mad Jack, he did well inheriting this lot. He inherited the estate in 1777 when he was 20 years old. I actually did a lot of good deeds as well as buying one of the local castles when it was going to be demolished because he didn't want to see it broken. Uh, nearby Eastbourne on the coast he paid for the first lighthouse down there, the Bell Toot. And he also paid for the first lifeboat for Eastbourne as well, I believe. A little, where I can zoom. Nice little shepherd hut down there. Although we're having trouble focusing that distance. Oh, that's a bit better. That's where the nearest footpath is. So we'll have to get down there in a minute. And up there, zoom out a little bit, is a massive swathe of woodland that I've never been in. So that's one for a later date. But as you can see, living in this part of the country, there's no shortage of places where you can go and camp. Not a bad view from up here. I'll just zoom you in a bit. Nice big woodland over there. Let's pan you around. 
shame the weather's a bit work today but Can't focus on that. My reason for being here is through this hole in the hedge. More of Mad Jack's silliness. Must have been nice to have a disposable income big enough just to build this sort of thing for fun. Uh, locally, it's been called the Shot Tower, which I don't believe it is. It's not tall enough to be a Shot Tower. I think the theory I hold to the most is there's a, a castle, lovely castle locally, about five, six miles away, Bodium. And when Jack heard that it was going to be sold off and possibly demolished, he was outraged. So he went to the auction and he bought it. And at the time, this is late 1700s, 1780, something like that. He paid 3,000 guineas. So God knows what that is in today's money. And this tower is very similar to one of the towers at the castle. So maybe he just fancied having a bit of, a, of his new castle on his ground as well. Or maybe it was just to show the locals, look what I've done, who knows. Sadly, it's locked up now. As a kid, I used to be able to go up. I'll show you what I can from inside. Stairs. They used to be able to go up. Can't really see much because I can't get close enough. I'll have a walk round and a look. That sort of gives you an idea. There's a platform up there. Yeah, shame you can't get in there anymore. But I suppose it's all the old health and safety rubbish, isn't it? Never mind. Just a quick look. This little surrounding piece of woodland. Rick, Lee, you know what I'm thinking. Right, on to the next location. Here we have the obelisk, um, built to commemorate Battle of Waterloo, 1815, which I've just double checked with Brainbox for those with me. And she confirms. Um, locals call it the Brightly Needle, but its proper name is the Obelisk. It's actually on the highest part of the estate, and it's probably one of the highest parts in the whole area, I would have thought. No real reason. It's just something different. It's the sort of thing he'd build. Can't go up to it, because it's all fenced off barbed wire and whatever. Not there's much to see anyway. That is it really. I won't film much here because it's private property and it's someone's house now. But in 1818 he had this observatory built. It was quite a fashion of the time. You know, emerging sciences and all that sort of thing. But, uh, 
Yeah, it'd be a bugger to live in there, wouldn't it? I haven't got a bad view either, if I turn around. Right down to the coast. I don't think I'll be able to zoom that far, but I can see the sea by the naked eye. Just about see the reflection of the water. If I can hold still, that's a long, long zoom. No, too wobbly. Reverse. Right, onwards and upwards. Right, here's an odd one for you. You can see the temple. Um, so, the big house that Mayor Jack lived in, John Fuller, would have been over in that valley there. But, I'll zoom out. Spin round. You get this. The story goes, when he was an MP, he was in London, had a discussion with one of his friends, and he told his friend he could see the spire of Dallington Church from his front window, which is impossible because it's the other side of this hill. He wouldn't back down, insisted that was the case, so they had a wager on it. And before his friends could come down here and visit to try and collect the bet, he had this replica of the top of Dallington Church built on the hilltop so he could point at it out of his window and see that. Told you so. And he won the bet. Well, that's how the story goes anyway. This one, I believe, is open. Have a quick look inside. Oh, I can hear the mouse rooting about inside there. Here's the entrance. Katie's digging out what we think's the fireplace. Because apparently someone did actually live in it at some point. So we're assuming that's the edge of the fireplace. That would have probably been where the flue went out. And you can make out the post hole bits from where there would have been a, an upstairs an upstairs window there as well it's not massive but it's doable another window that side and actually quite sizable so it would have been quite bright in here very interesting little location Yes, that is the Sugarloaf, as it's named locally. It was in them times when you bought sugar, and it was ridiculously expensive. You bought it in cone shapes, much like this. Right, I think that's all of these covered. We're off down the road to the pub. Here we have the final resting place of John, or Mad Jack, as he was known locally, Fuller, the Pyramid. He was apparently, according to rumour, buried in here, sitting at a table with a bottle of claret and wearing a top hat. Sadly, this has now been disproved. You know, makes a great rumour, doesn't it? He was a bit eccentric.
after a morning of wandering, we're in here for lunch. Well deserved, I say. <laughs>